times a hundred bands. Can you get it? Ain't no running man. Keep a hundred rounds. We gon' get them, ain't it? Show them the real deal, babe. Yeah. This is how it really be. Yeah, this is why I can't be filming. Okay, guys. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, what's up? My name is Tati, and yeah, you're on my YouTube channel. Today, I am finally sitting down and filming my labor and delivery story. I wanted it to be vlog style and that's what we aimed for but number one I did not know I was going into labor number two we had nothing ready as far as things for us and our memory cards were missing our camera was dead so it was just a whole thing but I do have little video clips I'm going to be sharing with you guys so my son is a month and a half old already so I just gave birth basically um and i got cleared on monday from the doctor so everything is still new still new for me and i feel like now is a prime time i can film this story because i've let all my emotions settle my vagina is not screaming in agony anymore and i can finally share this story with you guys um it was february 2nd at like 6 a.m and me and my husband were awake um we were just finishing watching um criminal minds i had never watched criminal minds no one put me on to criminal minds so we were like binge watching it um also side note if you hear my baby cry in the background it just is what it is um anyway yeah so we're watching criminal minds and we're binging it so we hadn't even slept yet and around 6 a.m i started to feel really strange and then by 6 45 i started to feel cramping um um and i knew to watch out for cramping because that means you're more likely like you're having contractions um but i had i was already 37 weeks almost 38 and i had never felt a contraction i only got braxton hicks if you are a pregnant girl and it's your first kid braxton hicks mainly feel like a tightness in your stomach not necessarily cramping and you have no lower back pain at least i didn't um so whenever i started going to the doctor and they're asking me about lower back pain and cramping i knew to keep that in mind because that means i'm having contractions not just braxton hicks so 6.45 I start to cramp and this is gonna get TMI real quick but I started going to the restroom like I thought that the Wendy's I had the previous day because I went in I had nuggets and fries and milkshakes and I'm lactose and I thought that that had like messed me up so I would go to the restroom every time I was cramping really bad I would go to the restroom and then I started telling my husband like start to like document how often i'm having these cramps because in my mind i'm thinking it's cramping and i'm thinking like i might have like my stomach is just upset or like i'm not even thinking i'm having a baby nothing but i'm like okay well like let's just keep it um documented so i know what's going on anyway so it goes from every 15 to 20 minutes no, it goes from 20 minutes to 15 minutes and 11 minutes and then I stayed at 7 for a while and I'm like, okay, but I'm constantly using the restroom, which I didn't know. Now I know, but at that time I didn't know my body was just like flushing everything oh, out. Oh, he fits in it? He fits. Yeah, so I didn't know, but my body was just like flushing out everything um, in preparation to deliver a baby and I just thought that I just had to poop that's what I thought and I'm like okay whatever but when it hit like 11 o'clock I'm like okay number one I'm not using the restroom anymore I'm just cramping I'm now starting to have really bad lower back pain and they are coming these cramps that I'm having are coming more often so at that point I knew that I was most likely having contractions so at 11 o'clock i'm like okay you know what i'm gonna have a hot a hot shower try to calm myself down and like i wanted to labor at home for as long as i could because my biggest fear and my biggest phobia was to get to the hospital and them tell me like 
you're not dilated enough or you're not progressing and they send my ass home i would not be able to function so i'm like you know what i need to thug it out i need to go until it's unbearable so whatever i my husband had made like um smoothies he makes smoothies every day and i had no appetite at all like i didn't drink it i couldn't i couldn't even drink water like i was just everything disgusted me so i'm like you know what i'm gonna get up i'm gonna take a hot shower and see how i feel i took a hot shower and i'm in there and my contractions are coming stronger um they're staying at the seven minute mark but they're getting like worse so I'm in the shower sweating bullets because I'm like, number one, I have bad anxiety. So I have been terrified to give birth since I found out I was pregnant. I'm just terrified. Number two, hospitals. My blood pressure is always through the roof because I'm because my anxiety. Number three, I'm like, this can't really be happening. I'm 37 weeks. I'm, you know, in your head, when they tell you a due date, you stick to that due date. Like my son at the time, I'm like, my son's not coming for another two and a half weeks, whatever. And then when my contractions started hitting, I prayed. I prayed in the shower because I was so scared. I was excited. I felt a million emotions, but I'm like, you know what? is gonna happen so i got out the shower and my contractions are hitting me hard so i'm like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and call the hospital and it was a sunday super bowl sunday and obviously like my doctor's office is not open but the hospital has like the after hour care and like obviously labor and deliveries are always open so at first i called labor and delivery and they told me I actually had to call my doctor's office first um, because they didn't give medical advice over the phone. So I had to call my doctor's office. Point is, I called my doctor's office. And I had waited until I was about 30 weeks to start seeing actual like um, OBs because I loved my nurse so much that I saw her all the way up until I couldn't see her anymore. And then I met a few OBs, but I had met my doctor twice. I only had two appointments with him and then I'm already going into labor. So point is, I didn't necessarily have a doctor that I was super comfortable with and I was like, we had a birth plan, nothing of the sort. I kind of just wrote it out with my nurse and then was kind of seeing everybody. So I call the doctor's office and they tell me that a doctor is going to call me back and is gonna see if I need to come in or not. So the doctor calls me back in about 15 minutes. And during these 15 minutes, I'm dying, right? I call my mom and I tell her what I'm feeling. My water hadn't broke or anything. So she's like, okay, well like, um, I'm gonna start to get ready, but when they call you back, let me know what they say and then I'll pick you up and we'll go to the doctor. And literally I could not get full sentences out because I had to keep saying hold on hold on because my contractions were coming and they were coming hard like the doctor finally calls me back and um dr kim i'll just say yeah there's i'm sure there's a million dr kims out there so dr kim called me back and i had actually seen him only once for a prenatal checkup and he was cool but i didn't really have a relationship with him like that so kind of whatever so he calls me back and i tell him what i'm experiencing he's asking me um how far apart they are how long i've been having them i'm like since like 6 a.m so he's like okay you know um it seems like you are having contractions he's like you are 37 weeks so it's very possible um so i'm gonna go ahead and advise you to go into labor and delivery um and I'll let them know to be expecting you. So I'm like, okay, cool. I call my mom. My mom says, okay. And she comes to pick me and my husband up. Now, I, at the time, was dealing with all of this. And my husband knew that I was having pain. And I thought they were contractions. But remember, I was going to the restroom. So, and I was kind of like leaving him out of the loop a little bit because... He already hadn't slept, so I'm like, okay, he has to sleep. So I'm like in the back of the house, um, taking a shower, like getting my head together. So I finally emerge from the restroom and I tell him, you know, the doctors advised us to go to the hospital and we need to pack our bag. And he was like, the bag's already packed. 
I'm like, no, the baby's bag is packed because I did my what's in my labor and delivery bag video. Thank God that I had filmed that because otherwise he wouldn't even have had a bag packed. So I told my husband we need to pack our bag and he's like, oh, like you feel like that, like you feel like that bad. And I'm like, yes, I'm dying. So I put on some leggings, a t-shirt and my platforms. I wore my platforms to the hospital. So um, my mom comes, we put the car seat in. And so we're driving to the hospital. Okay, so oh, update. Oh my God. Pains. Okay. You, uh, move that back. I feel Update. Like when I lay down, we had pains in the belly, babe, in the belly area, mm -hmm. in the area of West. So in the area of West, we had pains and um, <laughs> cramping. There's cramping also. So we called Doc. Doc said, "Get there, check it out. Let's see what's going on." So we're gonna see what's going on. Um, what's the time in between movements right now, babe? Contractions. Contractions. Yeah, contractions. Yeah, I don't know what that means, okay. but it's something, so <laughs> let's go. When do they stop me from We got us a Super Bowl Sunday, baby. Oh, um, that's like when I'm in active later, right? I think so, yeah. You'll get like ice chips. No, that is really, really going down. Yeah, because I think they really want you to go in like when you're like at least five minutes. You know, every five minutes, and you're like, yeah, there. She's in a lot of pain right now. I don't want to give her the camera. Because I was telling him, I know that some, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that some women get contractions, and then they just kind of have contractions all yeah. the way up until leading up. Yeah. It's been since seven eight. Yeah. So much for Valentino. <laughs> I thought we were going to have a little Valentine's Day, but we call it Valentino. Oh, I love that. Right? And, too. Oh. and I don't live too, too far from the hospital, but it's definitely like a 20 minute, 25 minute ride. And LA traffic is insane. So sometimes it takes me like 45 minutes to get to the hospital. Um, thank God that there was no traffic, no anything. So we ended up getting there. Um, I want to say I checked in at about one o'clock. Getting to labor and delivery, they're having me fill out these forms and my contractions are just hitting me. I'm like filling out the form and I'm like pausing and I'm filling it out, pausing. And I'm like, no one else can do this. Like you don't, like I had already submitted all these forms so I could just check in real quick. There was no quick check-in standing there for 15 minutes filling out forms. Anyway, so they go ahead and prep me. Um, well, they have me in this room and I undress, I put a gown on, and they're prepping me up. So they're, um, they have a monitor on the baby, they have a monitor on me. Um, since my water had not broke, um, they didn't really do the test to see if I was like um, leaking amniotic fluid or anything. So they just had the monitor up on me and baby. So um, a doctor comes in and she tells me that she's gonna go ahead and check me to see um, if I'm dilated or not. So I'm like, okay, cool. She's asking me um, about how long I've been feeling these pains and have I been timing them. And at that time, I still thought they were like seven to 10 minutes apart um, because every time I would feel when I would tell my husband to track it and it was seven to 10 minutes apart. So she goes ahead and puts her fingers up there and see if I'm dilated and yep I was so she sorry my husband's here so I'm like staring at him Ooh. with our baby so um she puts her fingers up there checks if I'm dilated and looks at how often I'm having a contraction so yes I was dilated I was three centimeters dilated and I think she said like 60% of face or 70% one of those so yeah and she actually told me that my contractions were not seven to ten minutes apart they were actually three minutes apart which i'm in active labor at that point so i was really shocked because i guess it was a little contractions i wasn't necessarily feeling so when i was timing them it was seven to ten minutes apart i was having a big one but it was really three minutes apart um so after that she tells me that they're gonna go ahead and admit me and 
my mom's like oh my gosh my husband's like oh my gosh and to me i was like oh but it didn't click like it didn't register like hey tatiana we're admitting you hi hello you're gonna push a person out of your vaginal canal like it just not did not register like i knew but i was like okay like going with the flow so they wheel me to a birthing suite and i'm in there chilling really because there's nothing else i can do and at this point i couldn't eat anymore camera cut off but at the time it was just us three and then um my nurse i'm chilling 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 and then my contractions start to really mess me up um then my cousin caroline came and you know she has three kids so i was so excited she was there because i'm like she's this is not her first rodeo and i felt like she can really like calm me down so it's really painful but i'm able to take it and i was trying to hold off on getting an epidural um because i thought that if i got it too early it was gonna like fade away by the time i had to push but that is not true and i'm gonna be doing a separate video on things that they don't tell you about being pregnant and giving birth so um so yeah so she's like rubbing my back and um i'm squeezing my husband's hand every time i'm having a contraction and i'm just really like breathing and just trying to remain calm So then by four o'clock, so two hours into the hospital, mommy being at the hospital, my water begins to break. I was laying down and I just felt a gush, like pain on myself. And I'm like, my water just broke. My water broke, like, and the nurse was like, okay. So she, at that time she had already put on like the diaper and the, um, like the netting underwear. Um, so she's like, okay, and then I had a pad under me as well. She's like, okay, I'll go ahead and change you. And then, um, she changes me and my water did not break all at once. It wasn't like gushing and gushing and gushing. It was like a gush and then like I, it took a minute for my water to fully be broken. Um, so I go ahead and I'm walking around and they bring me this peanut ball. So I have that between my legs and my contractions are really just at this time just really starting to kick my ass like kick my ass so i go ahead and i go out into the hospital hallway my water is still breaking and i'm just trying to walk and like honestly i was just trying to distract myself from the pain and i felt like when i was more mobile the pain was more tolerable we're ready for you wes Mom, you got mom walking. Wake up, Mr. West. Mr. West, he's out. He's out. We got Papa and Grandma. We haven't realized. We haven't figured out her name yet. This is Bobby. private video. Bubby. Bubby. <laughs> Bubby. You having another one? So I'm squeezing my mom's hand, squeezing my husband's hand, and I just start to like cry to myself. Like I wasn't sobbing, but I was crying because I was uncomfortable. My anxiety was starting to kick in. There's all these factors, I'm, and I wanted to make sure the baby was fine, and all these things are going through my head. And I'm walking around, walking around, walking around, and I finally get back to my room, and I'm sitting there, and um my cousin calls me because I, I was texting her or whatever and i'm like yeah i'm at the hospital they're like you're you're in the hospital what do you mean you're at the hospital well, like hello and they ended up getting in contact with my mom and my mom gave them the information so they came as well and then my mom's friend um had came by so at this point it's me my mom my husband my three cousins and my mom's best friend so seven of us are in the room and i didn't mind having that many people in my room at my hospital they allowed as many guests as you want as long as they can still do their job so at this point everyone's chilling everyone but me is chilling and 
you know they're keeping me company keeping me distracted and i want to say by seven o'clock start to really just I was trembling and me and my nurse I loved her as well she was really cool and she was super sweet and I was asking her you know if I get the if I get my epidural like sooner than later will it like fade out and she was like no that's a misconception no it's not gonna just fade out and you're gonna feel everything um, and she did advise me that if I wanted to pursue an epidural that I should get the epidural when the pain is a little more than tolerable because if I get it to the point where I'm dying and I'm trembling I won't be able to sit still and they probably won't be able to give me an epidural um, and I, I was just like kind of going back and forth with it and I was like okay like at this point I decided like I need to and while all this is going on it's like terrifying because i'm scared of everything at the doctor everything at the doctor so i'm scared of getting an epidural and then my blood pressure was like through the roof but i get such bad anxiety that like i'm just always anxious and nervous and scared and honestly the fact that they had me strapped up to a monitor and the baby and i can hear the baby's heartbeat i'm just terrified if something goes wrong and and i can hear it going wrong like i'm just thinking the worst so my mind is on 10 i'm not feeling well and i'm just like okay maybe the epidural will relieve some stress as well so i decided by seven o'clock i'm like you know what? i'm gonna get it and the doctor kept checking in on me as well and the doctor thought that because of my blood pressure she thought that they would have to jump start my labor um by giving me pitocin um because she thought that i wasn't going to progress and i progressed mm -hmm. so by seven o'clock i decided to get my epidural um my mom stayed with me so they come in to give me my epidural i don't even look at the needle i know the needle's pretty long because i've been watching hella videos about labor and delivery um but i did not look when they came to bring in the tray i did not look i could not look they explained to me how they're gonna do it what they're gonna do whatever so i'm squeezing my mom like they haven't even touched me yet squeezing her i'm crying because it's like you're trying to have this huge needle in your back in your spine you're having contractions at this point i'm having contractions every two minutes and i don't even know how dilated i was and i'm like what if i have like a long way to go like wait they give me this epidural i don't feel it and i was on cloud motherfucking nine i could not feel any more pain i did not feel any contractions and the little um graph that's coming out my contractions are like huge and i'm not feeling anything i'm not in any type of discomfort so they give me my epidural and the nurse is like okay i'll be back in about 20 minutes and we'll check um how dilated you are and i'm like okay cool and me and the nurse had discussed like oh the baby's probably not going to come till 4 a.m the next day or whatever because i did come in at only three centimeters dilated and they didn't think that it was gonna progress as fast as it did so she did the test and she was like well that's why you were in so much pain because you're seven and a half um you're seven and a half centimeters dilated and i'm like i almost went eight centimeters without an epidural so i'm like oh okay cool like we're getting there um so the doctor comes in and my blood pressure is still through the roof. The last time that she came in, she um, did a test to see how dilated I was and I was already nine centimeters. And then she said, okay, you're gonna start to push soon. But there was like some bag that was blocking, I wanna say blocking the baby's head. So she went in there and she said she can feel the baby's head a little bit but there's a bag right in front of him so she had to pop the bag in order to get to him and i'm like okay mind you i have an epidural so I, she could have removed all of my insides and i would have not felt anything i'm like okay pop it i don't care you know so she pops it and i can see my mom's face like she she was like that was rough like 
but I didn't feel it. So she pops it. She's like, okay, I'll check on you in another hour. So this is where things started to get a little scary. So, so I felt like my epidural was starting to fade a little bit. Um, I had gotten the epidural at seven o'clock or six o'clock and it was already nine so it was a few hours and it felt like either it was a different type of pain though I didn't feel my contractions but I felt a lot of pressure which was his head um and I was fighting the urge to push because she popped the balloon but I also had a little bit of cervix left um on my right side so I had to wait for that and I had to wait to hit 10 centimeters, but I felt all this pressure. My body naturally wanted to push. So they kept moving me from side to side to like help thin out my cervix. And um, it was it was a lot. I was in a lot of discomfort and I felt like they were just going back and forth a lot. They would move me one way. The doctor would tell them, no, move me the other way. The baby wouldn't like. It was a lot of moving. Changing positions. Maybe they like position one or two. So we're trying this now. Give her some oxygen because her anxiety. So right now she's nine and a half centimeters dilated. We got this boo. Um, and I was obviously frustrated, and yeah, so she came again the doctor and she was like okay it's almost thinned out um you're gonna start pushing soon i believe i was already 10 centimeters but it was a little bit of cervix left that we needed to thin out and i'll and she was like, okay i'll check on you in an hour and i told her there is no way in hell that i'm going to last an hour there's no way like none I'm like, I feel this constant pressure. She kept asking me if the pressure was constant or will go away. No, sis, I feel like I need to poo. And if you do not relieve me of this pain and discomfort, I'm gonna just push. And one of y'all are gonna have to catch them because I have to push. So she called in the people who came to do my epidural and they gave me a, another dosage and that knocked me completely out like my body i was still awake but i was done like i could not lift my legs i did not feel the pressure anymore and um a different doctor came in and he said that we were going to do a test push now i forgot to mention um when my when they checked my cervix and it had to thin out um my son's heart rate started to drop because mind you my heart is racing i'm terrified and i'm not speaking to anyone but i'm freaking out internally like i can't i'm not breathing properly i'm taking hella short breaths like i'm i'm almost having a panic attack what it feels like i've had panic attacks before and i'm almost there like i'm just psyching myself out <sighs> so they were like you know your baby's heart rate is dropping um so they went and gave me an oxygen mask and i had to take hella deep breaths and thank god for my husband because i i don't know what i would have done and you know he was helping me with my breathing and every time i would take a really 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 deep breath the baby's heart rate would start to go back to normal so now the there was it was a male doctor who had came in and he was like um you know we're going to do a test push you are 10 centimeters dilated and your cervix did just the now we're going to go ahead and do a test push um if the test push isn't hard enough or if you're having trouble figuring out how to push we are going to try and suction him out with a vacuum just because we cannot have his heart rate drop any more than what it is and as often as it's dropping and that like put me in go mode i was like there's no way they're gonna suction my child out like there's no way in hell because i cannot breathe properly no no if it's an emergency whatever fine but i knew that i could do it and i was just psyching myself out so i'm like okay cool i'm gonna do it i'm gonna push like crazy these little youtube videos help because they told me to push like i'm pooing I could do that. So I'm like, all right, bet, run it, you know? 
So, they have me up there and I do a push and he was crowning. So they're like, oh, like, all right, all right, don't push anymore. And I was a little frustrated too because I felt like they didn't have any faith in me. They were gonna jumpstart my labor with Pitocin. They were gonna vacuum him out. They were gonna do all these things. Like they really didn't think I could do it. So when he was crowning, I was like, I told you guys, I am feeling the pressure. Like, so they're like, okay, we called the doctor. And the doctor who told me to go into labor and delivery was actually the one who was on duty. So Dr. Kim told me to go in and Dr. Kim actually ended up delivering my baby. So Dr. Kim gears up and mind you, I still have this oxygen mask. And I'm just like, now that I'm finally checked in, I'm just like, I don't know if I could do it. Like I'm a little scared, you know? So it's like 9.30 and yeah, they're like gearing up or whatever and I, I want to say like 9.45 I start pushing so boom legs up to my ears I have to like in between pushes I had to um have my oxygen mask on but when I was pushing I had to take it off because I really felt like suffocated so I'm like pushing with all my might like like literally everything in me I am pushing and I can't feel anything I can't feel it when its head comes out I just know these things because of everyone's reaction everyone's like counting with me and Dr. Kim is like okay stop relax 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 and I'm thinking like they're gonna have to vacuum him out like there's no way like he would stop me and be like all right hold up so he's like, you need to listen to me because everyone's counting, everyone's fucking different paces. So he's like, you need to listen to me and you're, you're gonna push and you're only gonna hold it for five seconds. So I'm like, okay, and this was my last push. So my whole shit went black and I didn't know, like I, I pushed that one from my, like my head. So I went black, like I passed, gone, just for a second. And then he tells me to look down and my son, I'm gonna cry. Oh, me too. <laughs> Sorry, I really didn't think I was gonna cry, but bring it in. <laughs> but yeah, so he told me to look down, and I looked down, and I literally felt like a water balloon, like just just slippery, and like something fly out, and it was him, and I was like. <laughs> because honestly that epidural saved my life and probably like my child's life because with that I don't know like I'm just a very anxious person if you're not you can do it without an epidural just breathe and like yeah he agrees like you can do it I'm just anxious as hell so I needed it so yeah he flew out literally and I was just so in love like he was beautiful like gorgeous like everything about him was better than what I ever imagined like just beautiful and the placenta I don't I don't even know when that fell out because I did not feel it at all um and he had this huge like umbilical cord that all the doctors nurses were like in disbelief they were like this is like the healthiest umbilical cord like we've seen you know it was huge and they take him away and they set him up or whatever and everyone leaves me they don't care about me anymore i'm old news everyone goes to see the baby and my cousin Lupe, my mother fucking ride or die stays with me and Dr. Kim has to stitch me up because I got a two degree tear, which recovering from a tear or giving birth again, I would give birth again because that tear just messed me up. Like it was the worst. So they stitch me up and then clean up everything. They go, um, everyone's with the baby my husband want to go get me food so i had food and then they moved me into my room and yeah and it was me my husband and the baby and um and it was 
crazy. It was nuts. Like, after giving birth, it all clicked. <laughs> like, I'm a mom, you know? Um, but it was crazy. It was a motherfucking ride. So, technically, I was only in the hospital for about eight hours. Um, he was born February 2nd at 9.59, not 10 p.m., 9.59, and I didn't end up giving birth the next day at 4 a.m. like we thought, and I did not end up giving birth on his due date, so don't count on your due date at all. But that is my labor and delivery video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys found some tips in there somewhere i remember watching these videos and i was just like i'll cry for every single one and it's it's intense but it's very worth it i hope you guys like this video and i pray for all of you mommies watching to have um a very safe and very healthy baby and a very safe delivery um yeah so i love you guys my child's crying should I show them in this video? Nah. Nah, we'll save it. Alright, I'll see you guys next time and I love you. Bye!